hear you guys. And like we said, we're going to introduce ourselves, give you some tour requirements, go over the guidelines, and, then, and, and on each section we'll take questions, and then at the end, any other general questions that you thought of after seeing everything. So here we go. We're going to start with introductions, just name and your role or whatnot. My name is Tracy Downing, and uh, I was one of the founders last year, and uh, I'm not part of it this year, so, uh, but I'll be happy to answer any questions from last, you know, from basic questions, whatever. <laughs> Real quickly, we're putting pictures up here of like traces in the middle. We just showed the coops as they were last year entered into the coop tour, just to give you an idea. I'm Julie Woods. Um, my coop was on the tour. Louder, please. Sorry. My name is Julie Woods. Uh, my coop was on the tour last year, and now I'm on the My name, is Carla, my name is Carla Allen, and I wasn't on the tour. Um, I live in San Marcos, but I've always been a supporter of backyard chickens. Uh, when I first started with chickens, there was no one to talk to, and I so wish that there was an association like this. Um, but I've helped out last year, and then again this year. Right now, I'm working with the uh, participants and any of the volunteers. So if you have any questions about that, uh, let me know. My name is I'm Judith Haller, and um, I volunteered last year to work on the publicity for the tour. And uh, my coop was also on the tour, and I had a really great time. And uh, I would welcome anybody to give me any advice on places that they think we need to advertise the coop tour. Uh, for example, if you heard about it late, where should I have put that information so that you could have found it? And uh, so I'd be happy to vote. I'd be happy to take any suggestions you have on how to help, how to continue promoting the tour. Thank you. My name is Ashley O'Brien, and last year my coop was on the tour, and this year I'm part of the organizational committee to help with the tour. Thank you. And then I guess, yeah, I'm Michelle Hernandez, and I was one of the also, people on last year's Coop Tour Committee in this year and um, helped with the planning. And you can see about with my Coop last year. We have more Coops since then. <laughs> That's one of them. Um, and yeah, we're, I'm working with the committee this year again, planning and uh, going forward and getting excited about the tour. So we're going to go from that into the tour day overview. So what, what do you need to know? The big things are when is it? It's April 3rd, 2010 from 10 to 4. And keep in mind, if you are considering applying, it's a week from today is the deadline. We have applications available to download from the blog, for the Coop Tour blog. Um, and we also have some printed ones today. If you want to fill, we'll take a printed one if you fill it out today. If you don't fill it out today, please do the one online. Um, we are looking to have Coops throughout Austin city limits. And closer to the tour, we'll have a map available on the blog of where they are. Our blog that we keep mentioning, the full URL is fccooptour.blogspot.com. If you type in austincooptour.org, you'll also get redirected there. We also are on Twitter and Facebook, uh, twitter.com slash AFCT. And Facebook, is, this is a good way to say it, search on Austin Funky Chicken Coop Tour. And what we're going to do now is go um, over the guidelines for the Coop Tour. And we'll, we'll make it a little bit. Can you guys see the, the, the print on this? Or hang on. Or does it need to be bigger? Bigger. Okay. Hang on. I'll get that bigger. You uh, give me. Uh. How about like that big? Okay. You might have to scroll a little bit. Yeah. But um, basically, like we said, it's due. We're going to go down the checklist. The first thing you have on the coop tour is the checklist, the location. It's, you've got to be in the Austin city limits. If you're not sure, um, you can call 311 and, and talk to them and find out for sure. I think most people know. Um, legal considerations, you need to make sure you meet the local ordinances, so that's Austin city ordinances, as well as any, as any neighborhood restrictions you want. We're, we're interested in all kinds of coops, but we want them to be in compliance with whatever their restrictions are. Uh, we have a link here that we're not going to go through all of the ordinances, but this is a link to the ordinances online for the city of Austin. 
um, some general stuff. We, we did an excerpt here. This is not inclusive of all ordinance to do with foul. But basically, the idea is to have two or more foul, you have to be at least 50 feet from a residence or business, excluding the residence or business of the foul owner or handler. And I'm going to readjust that so I don't give you, like, feel like you're on a merry around watching me do that. Okay. Uh, another thing we want is healthy birds. Um, we need clean coops and healthy birds with bright eyes and no obvious issues such as runny bowels or oozy sores. If a bird gets, things happen we can't plan for. So if a bird ends up getting sick on the, you've been accepted on the tour and a bird, one of your birds is just looking kind of under the weather, just make sure that day it is separated out somewhere else for purposes of the tour. Uh, the bird housing needs to be adequate, <clears throat> excuse me, which means and if anyone wants to step in at any point, just tap me. Um, the, you need to have shelter against the elements, so you know things to keep them comfortable in heat, cold, or inclement weather. Make sure rain doesn't fall straight on their head, so there needs to be enclosure. Um, it needs to be secure against predator attacks. And wherever you are, it needs to be a viable street where you can have street parking without hazard, or some place where people can park and get to your coop without you know being in every your neighbor's driveway. Um, it's very important on the day of, that, of the tour that your, your area, your house, you're basically doing this as an individual and you're inviting people to come in to your personal property. So you want to make sure you have your, um, your grounds in order, you know, sharp objects, anything loose and movable like, a, I don't know, a rake, anything someone, a child could run off and hit out of the way. Um, and you're also welcome to tape off areas and keep, have your docents keep people to a specific area. Going back to the uh, parking and your neighbors, it's also a good idea to let your neighbors know that you're going to be on a tour. Last year's tour, we had close to a thousand people, and that's a lot of traffic in your neighborhood. Um, so if your neighbors don't know what's going on, uh, they might get a little bit upset. Absolutely. Very good point. Very good. Um, based on last year's attendance, we know that one person alone cannot run the tour. It is going to be mandatory. You're going to need some help, and we call those the docents, your helpers, assigned docents. You need at least two, and it wouldn't be a bad idea. Some people might even want to talk to that, but you have more than, than two um, on the, the day of the tour. And what they'll help you do is they'll help vi greet visitors, answer some questions, make sure to supervise the grounds while you're busy answering questions on your coop. And as noted here, some had 600, and I even heard it's cl closer to 700. So that is going to be a manda uh, mandatory requirement. That could be anyone, you know, it could be husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, neighbors, cousins, whatever, but someone responsible, dependable who will be there. And when you submit your application, you'll need at least a, a, a photo. It can be a link to the photo of your, of your coop. To your, to, of your coop. Um, you need to be able to see the elements of the coop. You know, don't show us it at night, <laughs> but just show us what, what is there and available so we can clearly see it before going further. And this last one, information session. Last year, you know, we all didn't know what we were getting into for sure, how it would go. We know it's been a big success, and we've heard a lot of enthusiasm about it this year. So we want to make sure that um, everyone who's getting on the tour understands what they're getting into. So this mandatory information session is like, that's what we're having right now, so you get a chance to ask. And we will probably have at least one more, but it'll be, th that will be a requirement before we go look at a coop. Um, and then down here, we're not going to go through as much, but we just have the, the quiz that basically just reiterates when you fill out that you've read everything above. You have to answer yes to all of these. Are you in city limits and so forth? And it's just the same stuff as we just went over. A place where you put your docent's name um, are also listed. Um, and the, the Coop Tour application is pretty straightforward. I'm going to just briefly go through it. How do you learn about the tour? It's just nice for us to know, especially as we do PR. Where, where are people learning? Name, address, you know, phone, contact information, why you raise chickens, why you raise your backyard poultry, what your coop description is. Um, again, it shows pretty clearly. Information about your birds. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's that part. And right, we're taking the applications, but um, 